reading and public hearing for ordinance number 15-01 in the matter of amending lane code chapter 15 to adopt a vehicle registration fee if approved by lane county voters in may 2015 and we have uh, lydia mckinney our transportation planning supervisor here and i'll turn it over to her for a few minutes for a brief presentation before we go to the public hearing Ms. mckinney is this working Thank you, Chair Bozovich, Commissioners. Thank you. Um, as Commissioner Bozovich noted, we're here today for a public hearing on a proposed vehicle registration fee. The purpose of this hearing, of course, is to receive public comment on the board's consideration of placing the vehicle registration fee on the May ballot. But I want to start with a brief presentation uh, just to bring us all up to date on what the process has been. For several years, the county and the board have been wrestling with ways to restore revenue to our shrinking road fund. Lane County's road fund historically received approximately $20 million from secure road school funds in addition to funds we received from the state highway fund. In those days, the county was able to share those revenues with cities within Lane County, and so we all had a much larger amount of funding to be able to maintain and preserve safe roads. After years of reductions, this year we're facing the fact that SRS payments, Secure Road Schools payments, have been completely eliminated. We're anticipating that this year we'll receive, in lieu of the SRS payments, approximately $600,000 in actual timber receipts. Because we've focused on these, we've, we've been aware of these, these uh, reductions in the future. Public Works and the Board has made significant cuts in the Public Works Department. We've cut staff, we've reorganized departments, and we've implemented efficiencies and technologies to be able to uh, use innovative ways to preserve and maintain our roads, and these technologies are being picked up by other local agencies. But despite these measures, we've reached what we're calling the tipping point. The Board recognizes that we, what we've really need is a stable funding source to be able to maintain and preserve safe roads. So in August, the board directed staff to work directly with our citizen advisory committee. The, the board appoints the roads advisory committee to seek ways to restore revenue. Uh, the board wanted the public work staff to be able to continue to invest wisely in our $6 billion assets of roads and bridges by being able to pay now uh, a dollar to be able to maintain our good roads in good condition rather than having to pay significantly more later as they deteriorated. And the board specifically wanted the uh, roads advisory committee to address a solution that would be a regional one, not just a county one, because again, we recognize that it's not just the county that's facing shrinking road fund revenues, but our cities as well. The Roads Advisory Committee discussed a number of options in great detail, and they looked at a lot of different means of being able to generate that revenue. We talked about transportation utility fees, we talked about county bonds, we even talked about tolls on roads, um, we talked about local gas tax. But after analyzing and discussing the most promising options, the Citizens Committee unanimously recommended to the board to pursue the option of a vehicle registration fee. And some of the reasons for this were, the funds are generated by road users. Vehicle registration fees are relatively stable over time. Gas taxes, which is what uh, comprises our state highway fund, a portion of, we know that those have been uh, being dropping over time and we expect that to continue. Uh, revenues from the vehicle registration fee would be shared between the city and the county. The county would distribute 40% of the funds to the cities. A vehicle registration fee is cost effective and simple to implement and administer because the state essentially collects it when they collect the state vehicle registration fee. Maintaining and preserving roads now with a dedicated fund would help save taxpayer dollars from being spent on more expensive repairs in the future. So, so those were some of the reasons the Roads Advisory Committee directed you to consider this. After the discussion we reported back to the board, you directed staff to do some research on this and to uh, hire a polling firm to gauge the public's response to a proposed modest increase. And according to our consultant, who we've used before with much success, a significant majority of the voters indicated they would prefer to pay a modest fee as opposed to seeing additional service cuts. 
and there were some things that were important based on his research. That modest fee, the $35 point was the price point that he found was acceptable. We could have brought it up to $43 as a proposal, but that wasn't um, as as satisfactory to the public. Um, the fact that we would have accountability and the board has taken that accountability piece very seriously and has indicated that if you do move forward, this would include an annual audit um, and also a review by our Citizens Advisory Committee and you might have a report similar to what you heard this morning from the sheriff. And then the other component that uh, Dr. Manross, our consultant, indicated that it was very important to provide clear, consistent information to the public about how we would use those funds. The board directed us to then discuss this proposal with our regional partners, the 12 cities within Lane County. We were able to meet with 11 of the 12 and nine of the cities supported the board in continuing to move forward. In fact, Commissioner Bozovich was just recently on the 20th in the city of Florence with the county engineer and they unanimously uh, gave you their support as well. We had a first reading on January 6th um, and we set the public hearing for today. At that meeting, the board also gave very clear direction to staff that if you do choose to move this forward, that you would want staff to prepare a voter's pamphlet with information on the fee and also the opportunity for people to provide comments for and against. In the event the board chooses to move forward with this ordinance, staff is prepared to complete that voter's pamphlet as directed by the board. So if you do choose to move this forward, staff will return to the board on the February 10th meeting of the board order authorizing the voters pamphlet. And we would also have a committee as part of that uh, board order. Um, the voters pamphlet requires the explanatory statement be prepared by an impartial committee. Additionally, we would bring back draft ballot language for your review on the time. And as you know, February 10th is the last meeting that the board has before the deadline of February 27th. That's our deadline to get the ballot title submitted. So at this point, this concludes my presentation. I'm happy to answer any questions. Any questions for staff before we open the public hearing? Seeing none, then I'm going to open the public hearing. I'll remind people that there's still a sign-up sheet in the back if you haven't signed up to speak yet. Um, I've got a sheet here that we can start down first if you want to leave that back there to see if anyone else signs up. Um, and I will call people in the order they signed up. You'll have three minutes to address the board uh, and we'll work our way through everybody that signed up. The first person signed up is Don French. And if you'll come to the podium and state your name and the city uh, you reside in uh, for the record and then be, your three minutes will begin after that. And he will be followed by Susan Tava Kalian, Kalian. Sorry, Susan. Uh, Don. Go ahead. I'm sorry, uh, Don France, Eugene, uh, good day to all of you. I want to thank my Commissioner Sorensen for um, personally responding to a letter I had on this topic. Um, my biggest objection is one that you have no control over, and that's who the method of applying this tax. I really have an issue with studded tires. I drive an old pickup, and the other day I was at a stoplight, and there's one of these giant pickups with studded tires on all four tires, and I'm thinking you're going to charge him the same thing you want to charge me, and I know who's tearing up the roads, but I realize that you can't address address that issue. I, you can't address large commercial vehicles, so I realize you know a lot of this is out of your hands, but. Um, it still feels unfair and it doesn't feel like something I can personally support. And I guess the other thing was the uh, idea that it's permanent. If I'm not mistaken, this would be a permanent tax, not to be renewed. And uh, I'm against that as well. So thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. French. So next up is Susan. I, I, you're going to have to pronounce your last name for me. And after that is Dennis Cassidy. 
Well, good afternoon. I'm Susan Tavacoli, President of the League of Women Voters of Lane County. Thank you for the opportunity to provide comments about the proposed vehicle registration fee. The League believes that it's essential to maintain public infrastructure such as roads and bridges and that user fees are an appropriate funding source for such maintenance costs. Federal forest payments, which previously helped pay for road construction and maintenance, have declined with the gradual depletion of fo road fund reserves. We recognize that additional revenues must be found to prevent the rapid deterioration of the county's $6 billion investment in transportation assets. We support the adoption of an ordinance establishing a county vehicle registration fee and referral of the measure for voter approval in May of 2015. The fee will be paid by local vehicle owners who use the streets and roads constructed and maintained by the state and local jurisdictions. Though not fully adequate to meet all future county maintenance needs or to eliminate city backlogs of critical road maintenance, the fee nonetheless will provide significant stable resources for these purposes. The county fee will be collected by the Oregon Department of Transportation along with the state vehicle registration fees, thus simplifying the administration of the county program. We support establishing a citizen oversight committee and requiring an annual audit of county projects completed. We also support using the county's portion of the revenue from the fee strictly for repairs and maintenance of existing roads and bridges and not for new construction. We urge you to add language to that effect to the ordinance, lane code, and ballot measure statement. Voters must rely on the wording of the measure itself, not on other expressions of intent in evaluating the proposal. We applaud your, your direction to publish a Lane County voters pamphlet. One of the League's concerns has been the lack of specifics about which county roads or bridges would be maintained with the funds from the fee. As we've learned more about the process used by the County Public Works Department to inspect each facility, determine its pavement condition index, and develop an efficient work plan for the year, we understand better the difficulty of creating a list of projects that will be undertaken in the short and long term. It would be helpful to disseminate to the public the county's approach to preparing a work plan for road maintenance, as well as a list of major roads that are the responsibility of the county. In conclusion, we recommend that you revise the vehicle registration fee proposal to state clearly that Lane County will use its share of the fee for maintenance and repairs, not new construction, and send it to the voters with adequate information. Thank you. Thank you. So Dennis Cassidy followed by Aaron Jorgensen. My name is Dennis Cassidy. Thank you for the opportunity to speak to you. Uh, I'm a lifelong resident of Eugene. Um, I'm opposed to the additional uh, vehicle registration. I've got several collectible automobiles which uh, rarely see daylight. Um, I would ap ap appreciate or uh, like to see an additional gas tax in lieu of an additional uh, vehicle registration, which the gas tax would help Lane County benefit from tourists that uh, come here and are using our roads. Thank you. Thank you. Aaron Jorgensen, followed by Brad Russo. <clears throat> Aaron Jorgensen, Springfield. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak. I'm speaking in support of taking a vehicle registration fee to the public for a vote. Most citizens of Lane County are unaware of what it takes to keep up 1,400 miles of roads and 400 bridges in a safe manner. I want to speak in regards to weather events. Lane County Public Works dispatches their crews at any hour of the day or night as a weather event occurs. This could be from a windstorm, flooding, freezing weather, snow, etc. While most citizens are safe in their warm homes, public works crews are out doing the dangerous work, cleaning the roads from trees, slides, clearing culverts, drain basins, plowing snow, de-icing roads, and removing debris hung up beneath a bridge. These actions are what employees at public works do in order to keep the roadways and bridges safe. Lane County roadways and bridges will not remain safe without a funding source to take care of the maintenance required. Let's continue to enjoy the nice, safe roads 
by passing a vehicle registration fee that will allow Lane County citizens to have safe travels. Thank you. Thank you. Brad Russo followed by Rick Keen. Hello, Brad Russo here. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, I'm a citizen of Lane County and I live in Springfield. I've been a working citizen here in Lane County for over 35 years. I'm here in support of a vehicle registration fee. Road maintenance isn't sexy business. I mean, that's just the facts. It's dirty, dangerous, physically demanding, and sometimes underappreciated. Lane County Public Works has 90 full-time employees that maintain 1,440 miles of road, 417 bridges, and this does not uh, include uh, the contracted out maintenance that the other companies uh, work on for us. So I want to kind of give you a slight overview. We lay out 500 tons of sand in the winter months, <coughs> excuse me, 60,000 gallons of de-icer, 100 tons of cracked seal applied to the roadways, 15,000 tons of rock placed on gravel roads. We mow all roads at least twice every year and some a little bit more, but that's up to over 5,000 miles of actual mowing. Uh, we brush mow 600 miles annually. We sweep 7,500 miles of roadway. We chip seal 75 miles of roadway. We lay 15,000 tons of asphalt. We have uh, 5,000 linear feet of culvert we, we replace yearly. We strike 1,400 miles of roads yearly. We have a urban leaf pickup program where we pick up 4,000 uh, yards of leaves every year. <coughs> Excuse me. We also maintain 80 miles of guardrails, sign maintenance and vandalism, culvert and catch basin cleaning, and uh, we keep up 160 miles of uh, gravel roads that we grade with uh, motor graders. And let's not forget the endless hours of cleaning up during and after winter floods, freezing weather, and wind storms. Without this type of continued maintenance, roads and bridge safety will be compromised. Road and bridge safety will be compromised. That's a pretty serious matter here in Lane County. I support the vehicle registration fee because I want to continue to have safe travels on Lane County roads and bridges. I want my children and their children to have safe travels also. Thank you. Thank you. Rick Keen, followed by Craig Opperman. Thank you. My name is Rick Keen. I am technically not a resident of Lane County. I reside in northern Douglas County. I was born and raised in Cottage Grove, and I'm here um, because I represent the road maintenance crews, the waste management division, fleet services, and park division of Lane County as the president of Lane County Association Local 626. My intention today is to speak on the need for a stable revenue source by which the workers I represent and the organization that we work for can fulfill the obligations to the people of Lane County. The men and women who repair the streets and pile the snow, they remove the trees, they take that task very seriously. They've worked nights and weekends, long hours in the worst weather to keep the road system that we all rely on in good condition. Our ability to do this basic work has been compromised by the decline and eventual sunset of federal dollars. When I began paving roads for Lane County, our team had an allotment of 24,000 tons to repair defects in the system yearly. We prioritized the needs and spread this out on roads from Mackenzie Bridge to Cottage Grove, Oak Ridge to Florence. This year, due to the budget cutbacks, we had 7,000 tons to accomplish the same goal. Many times I've been on a work site and had a member of the community tell me that this road is fine and you should be working on Highway 99 or Territorial Highway. Now I see the same economic conditions that led to disrepair on other road systems looming over ours. Lane County has taken a proactive approach, investing in maintenance of our $6 billion asset. And like a man who painted one side of his house every year, the entire home was completed every fourth year, and the annual cost is low, the product always performs well. 
Shall we wait until the paint peels and the rot invades and the insects take residence before we act at greater expense? We have for years explored the options. Everyone acknowledges the end of federal funding will come. Shall we not act in a way to keep our roads safe and to be good stewards of what we have? I ask the board to consider vehicle registration fee as a means to that end. Let's apply a sustainable solution to this pressing problem. Thank you. Thank you. Craig Opperman, followed by George, and I'm going to murder this because I winkles. Good afternoon. Thanks for the opportunity to speak. Um, I'm Craig Opperman, uh, Eugene and Lane County resident. I'm usually here talking to you about uh, social service infrastructure, um, so I'm doing a little bit of a shift, although this actually connects in my mind. Um, Obviously, if when I look at this, if we don't pay you now, we're going to have to pay you a lot more later. So it really makes sense to me in that regard. And I know that my own um, personal driving experience, if there's a pothole or damage on the roadway, just one mistake ends up costing me hundreds of dollars. It would cost me more than this fee would on the basis you're talking about. So I think it makes sense to me. But also in terms of just all of us being safe on the roadways, I think it's important to have really well-maintained roadways and bridges. And relating back to my other life from Looking Glass I always talked to you about, we literally have van loads of kids that travel to different meetings and recreational events throughout the county, but also regularly our vocational crew program that does creek and river cleanup and trail maintenance, and I think even roadway cleanup and work along the roadways. It's, it's really important to me that those van loads of young people that are out there driving these highways we're talking about are on a safe roadway for their transportation as well as everybody else around them. So it really is kind of a public safety. These things are all related and I appreciate your thoughts in that regard you know it's a domino effect and so this is a public safety issue for all of us and the final note I would add is that I'm hearing discussions of how this money would be used and you've already got a proven track record very recently in terms of the public safety levy is how the voters have asked you to use that money in a specific way and you've done that and proven that and I think this is sort of the same type of instance we're facing now I think you've developed a lot of trust in us to use this the way it's you're telling the voters it'll be spent. So thanks for your attention to this. Appreciate the time. Thank you. George, and please pronounce your last name for me, and followed by Len Goodwin. I'm George Winkles. I am against this. Uh, it's going to cost me $140 a year to pay for this, and I think that's ridiculous. I think a gas tax would be a lot better. It's more fair. And another thing about it, it's only charging the people of Lane County. All the other people that use our roads don't pay a penny on it. So I think they should look at a gas tax increase instead of a vehicle tax. I just, I don't think it's fair, and I'm against it. Thank you. Len Goodwin, followed by Jim Wilcox. Afternoon, Commissioner Bozovich, Chair Bozovich, members of the Commission. My name is Len Goodwin. I reside in Elmira. I thank you for the opportunity to speak to you today about the proposal to impose a county vehicle registration fee and for your willingness to bring this proposal forward. There is no question that the roads in Lane County, like the roads in Oregon and throughout the country, are in abysmal condition and getting worse. Every recognized professional organization has reported on the decline in America's infrastructure. But as citizens of Lane County, we don't have to rely on the opinions of professionals. We simply have to drive on the roads and pay the bills for queen alignments, blown tires, and damaged suspensions. Why are we in this fix? The answer is really simple. While the cost of everything is going up, including the cost of preserving roads, the amount of money cities and counties have to spend on roads is flatter going down. Many reasons for this. Federal action has forced engines to become more efficient. More efficient engines use less gas. During the recession, people drove less and found other alternatives. They had no choice. Now that the recession has ended, many people have found that they like those other alternatives, and even with gas prices plummeting, they are sticking to those choices. Businesses are moving to rail instead of truck transportation. The weight and mile tax, which heavy vehicles pay in lieu of registration fees, will now produce less. 
Some, of course, claim that costs can be cut. They say that the problem is high wages and benefits for public employees. While, as you heard, routine maintenance is done by uh, county staff, the reality is that very little road preservation spending is for public employees. Those who do the work are private contractors. County uh, limiting spending on preservation will end up cutting private sector jobs not the solution for those who rightly demand that will be more family wage jobs. The choices are limited. We can use other funds and cut services to those funds provide or we can add more revenue. We can always urge the federal or state governments to provide the solution with a simple example of the current state fuel tax and registration show, fee shows why that's not a good idea. Of each penny in state gas tax, counties get 30%. And even that is divided up among all 36 counties based on registrations. In reality, what that means is that our money paid for state fees uh, goes to pay for road work in the Portland metro area. How much better it would be for us to adopt something that would keep all Lane County money at home. Some complain that part of the money goes to cities. Well, I know that I drive on city streets as much as some county roads, and I know most of the cars that pay the fee are registered to city dwellers. It's fair to share. No one wants to pay more. I'm a recent retiree on a fixed income. I know my Social Security COLA probably won't keep up. But I also know that the $70 a year my wife and I will pay for our two cars pales in comparison to the cost of a wheel alignment or a place in shocks. You're at Things three minutes left if you want to wrap it up. Yes. I urge you to move forward and thank you for your attention. Thank you. Jim Wilcox, followed by Nancy Nichols. <clears throat> Commissioners, uh, thank you for allowing me to speak. My name is Jim Wilcox. I live in Eugene, and I've been a resident here for uh, over 40 years. Um, and there's been a lot of good arguments today. I'm in favor of the uh, registration fee increase. I serve on the Lane County Roads Advisory Committee at the pleasure of Commissioner Sorensen. And we have reviewed all the other options that uh, have been presented. And we have agreed that this particular option for raising the registration fee is the uh, best option amongst the different ones. Uh, one of the things that businesses look at when they're thinking of moving into a particular area is how well the infrastructure is maintained. It gives a sense to the uh, business how much pride there is on the part of the, of the government and the residents in, in taking care of of uh, the facilities and I think this is really important in this situation because we need to be maintaining our roads much better than they are today. Right now the gas prices are down some people might say well gas taxes could go up but as we've seen uh, those monies are dispersed in different ways. However since they have gone down the people are saving a lot at the gas pump right now. The average family pays about three thousand dollars in gas a year and that's gone down by about a thousand dollars with the current prices. So. Uh, there is some leverage room in there, I think, for this. But I think the analogy of the uh, situation with uh, maintaining the paint on a home is one of the best ways to look at the situation. I've had my home for about 30 years, and I can tell you that I've maintained that paint really well. All of my neighbors will agree that uh, this house has never shown signs of wear as far as paint, because every time I see that start to wear, I put a fresh coat on. That's why my neighbors will say his house has been the same color for 30 years. <laughs> I don't let it start, chip, start to chip, create holes that I have to scrape off, and this is what would happen if we let our roads deteriorate. It's a very hard concept for a lot of people to understand. They say, why are you fixing roads that look fine? We're preserving those roads. When we let them go to a situation where we have to rebuild them, it can take us five to ten times as much money. Therefore, I believe it's really important that we have this registration fee, we build back our money for uh, preserving the roads, and prevent, prevent the amount of, uh, uh, of maintenance that will be required in the future. Thank you. Thank you. Nancy Nichols, followed by Paul Howard. My name is Nancy 
Wow. My name is Nancy Nichols. My address is 93849 Deadwood Creek Road, Deadwood, Oregon. I am in favor of paying to maintain our roads. Deadwood Creek Road is paved and in pretty good shape right now for the first seven and a half miles. Then it turns to gravel for about five miles before it hits Forest Service land. It is hard not to notice the decline in maintenance on these five miles of Deadwood Creek Road. The potholes get deeper before the road is graded and the county suspended summer dust control two years ago. Dust control is important. It is not a frill. During the summer, choking dust clouds rise up behind every vehicle, making walking or bicycling on the road unhealthy. On some days, especially if there is heavy equipment traveling back and forth to the National Forest, the air is so bad it is difficult to be outside our homes. Even inside, a layer of dust settles over everything. Many houses were built fairly close to the road, not thinking that the county would ever stop summer dust control. I understand that the proposed tax would return dust control. $35 a year is a small price to get my summer back. Lane County needs to return to the maintenance schedule it had five years ago. That includes dust abatement. And even for people who never drive on a gravel road, $35 is a great deal. I just spent $700 for new tires and alignment on my car. The old tires would have lasted another 10,000 or should have lasted another 10,000 miles, but the bad alignment voided the warranty and, you know, $700 is a lot more than 35. While I can't prove it, though, I suspect the alignment was more damaged by hitting some potholes I didn't expect in Eugene at 35 miles an hour than the ones I know really well that I can creep through at 5 miles an hour. Most people will actually end up ahead by paying $35 more a year for decent roads. Please let us have the chance. Thank you. Thank you. I have Paul Howard followed by Sandra Larson. And if you could bring up the, the next sheet. Oh, thank you. Good afternoon. I'm Paul Howard. I live in Eugene. I um, find it a little bit amusing, certainly entertaining, everybody coming up and arguing for road maintenance, whereas nobody is going to come up here and argue that we shouldn't maintain the roads. It's not an issue of whether or not we maintain our roads. We need to maintain. I am pro-road maintenance and pro-road repair and pro-bridge maintenance and pro-bridge repair. But the question up before you right now is not whether or not we do that, but how are we going to fund it? Is that not correct? So the staff has chosen a particular path, and that, that for the most part, is pretty good. One, it's too expensive because it's doubling our registration fee. But the most important thing is a matter of fairness. It's an issue of fairness. The most, the largest threat to financial security in the United States at present is wealth um, distribution. And you're contributing to it, maldistribution. You could fix that by just a little bit and tweak that, just a little bit here in Lane County, by making that fee proportional to the value of the vehicle or the weight of the vehicle or the income of the owner. All of those mechanisms are used by various states across the country. You're aware of that. You're aware of that, right? That Oregon And Oregon is set to revise our statewide registration fees in the near future because we need to catch up with the rest of the country because of the same funding problems that Lane County is facing. Let's do something for fairness. Let's look at this fee and spread it. You're, you're, you're saying that the person that drives a $100,000 Hummer is going to pay the same fee to register his car as Mr. French is going to pay to register a $2,500 vehicle that sits in the garage most of the time. That is not fair. Thank you. Thank you. Sandra Larson, followed by John Nagy. Good afternoon. <clears throat> Pardon me. Um, I am Sandra Larson, Mayor of Venita, and I had just a brief comment today. I would remind you that the city of Venita is on record in favor of your placing this measure on the ballot. We believe that that is a responsible decision to refer it to the voters. I personally as an individual, am in favor of the measure itself. I believe it's the most logical, efficient, and accountable means to provide the necessary resources both to Lane County and to the cities of Lane County for critical infrastructure maintenance that are vital to our safety and our economy. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. John Nagy followed by Ed Daniels. Good afternoon. My name is John Nagy and I live in Springfield, Oregon. 
Uh, if I didn't know what we were talking about this meeting, I thought maybe we were having a, a union stiff with the county workers and they're looking for a raise. You know, I, I don't care about that. What I care about is some people can afford this and some people can't. If I'm going to go for, you're going to tax $70 onto an $84 license, that's quite an upgrade percentage-wise because the government tells me that my Social Security only goes up 3% a year. So all of a sudden you guys want to tack in almost 100%. On my license fees, I have four vehicles. At any given time, only one is on the road. Okay, about once a week. Okay, so now I got four vehicles. One is a motorhome that goes up every year twenty-five dollars on the license fee, and you're telling me you're not going to do it to uh, motorhomes, which how come it already goes up twenty-five dollars every year? You know. How about school buses? School buses do more damage to my road than my motorhome or my Nissan pickup do. But you're not going to tax those either. I don't understand how you pick this. Say it's only $35 a year, but it's almost double. Okay, you guys can manipulate numbers, do whatever you want. I'm not saying you're doing it, I'm saying this lady over here just did it, or right there, okay? You guys do this, and then you take that money, and you can't tell us where all of it's going, and then you take that money and manipulate it to go someplace else. And it's a habit that you've had since I've lived in the state for over 50 years. Not only the commissioners, the school boards, all of you do that. Promise one thing, deliver something else. Okay, so think about that. Not only think about it cost wise, think about it morally. Okay? You know, a sub water company takes me off their line because they have to repair it and then charges me $600 to hook up to something I already had for 40 years. And they don't think there's anything wrong with that. And you guys do the same things, no matter how you want to dress it up or code it. You're all guilty of doing it, all of you, okay? So think about that, too, where you're thinking about this. Thank you. Thank you. Ed Daniels, followed by John Wise. Hello, Commissioners. Ed Daniels. Uh, I live in Venita. You probably know me better as the Union President for Edmund Pro, but today I'm speaking as a citizen of Lane County. I had a speech I was going to give, but... As a lot of people stole some of my thunder, I don't know if everything we're talking about here today is going to be fair for everybody. The one thing I do know, and Lenny made a comment earlier, that um, ODOT put a report out last year, and Ashto referenced in 2012, that for every dollar of preventive maintenance that you don't spend today, you can spend up to $14 down the road for major repair. How we're going to take care of that, I don't know what the real answer is. I think the vehicle registration fee is one solid answer. I know I pay some of the lowest vehicle registration fees in the nation. Um, do I want to make the payment? No, but I know what our road system will look like in four years if we don't have the funding source to keep maintaining it at the level it's at. The county's done a great job keeping it maintained. It's fairly low uh, budget. It goes any lower. We're at the point, like she said, that it's not going to – you'll never be able to recoup the costs. You'll be in the situation that the city of Eugene is in now. They'll have to pass major bond levies to try to get a portion of your road system back in shape. So I'm in favor of it. And I, what we're trying to do here today is hope is to convince you to send this forward to the public, let the county inform them, and let the public vote on this. We're not asking you to make the decision to implement it today, are we? So I understand the, the, the arguments being made by some people. Let the public decide. Thank you. Thank you. John Wise, followed by Jim Torrey. Afternoon, Commissioners. My name is John Wise. I live in Holly, Oregon, not even in Lane County. I drive about 45 miles every day. I drive in. I can drive in two different counties if I want, besides Lane County. And I want to tell you that Lane County has the best roads in the state due to the fact that we maintain them. Without the maintenance of these roads, they're going to go quick. And by quick, I mean, we've done a lot of asphalt maintenance. I'm a surveyor here at Lane County, and I've seen where these roads go when they're not maintained, when they can't get water into inlets, and it just deteriorates the structure, and it just goes and goes. 
By and far, Oregon does have one of the cheapest registration fees in the nation. It, we're 39th in the nation. But it's going to cost way more to fix these roads down the road than what this $35 a year registration fee is going to cost. If it was maxed out at 43, we still come in 20 cent below below that, which is you know it's a helping factor. But I've driven road you know in and out of Lane County for 27 years, and I've had the flat tires, I've had the broken suspensions, I've had the six seven hundred dollar alignment jobs from hitting potholes, uh, manhole lids gone that are you know not fastened down so on and so forth. It also causes a safety factor when the roads start to deteriorate. People start dodging around potholes and stuff, trying to dodge them, coming around blind corners. I'm sure the gal from Deadwood's probably seen that. I've worked out there and noticed that, that uh, she could be coming around the corner and somebody's trying to miss potholes and they're, you know, facing eye to eye. So I think this is a small fee to ask to help keep our roads at the standard and they're not going to be at the standard they're at now. There's no way we can do it with this fee, which is just going to help stop the bleeding. And hopefully we can get this passed. And I'm, I agree with Ed. Let's get this out there. Let's let the voters take a look at it. Let's get some facts on the ground. I, I agree with some of these other people in here, too, that it, it's, you know, they're thinking it's sugar-coated or it's, it, they're getting blindsided. But I think we need this, and I'm totally behind it. Thank you. Thank you. Jim Torrey, followed by Scott Corey. Uh, Chair Bozovich, members of the commission, thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak. Uh, I know how much courage it takes for an elected body like yourself to put something before the voters and ask them to support it. There are no free lunches. Many of the people who have already spoken today have, and none of them have spoken against maintaining the roads. It's a matter of what's the best way to get the funds to do that. I think you folks have done your due diligence. I think you've looked at what you think has the best opportunity of success at the ballot box. And I think one of the things that has already been mentioned is the credibility that you folks have shown as a result of how you went forward after the citizens gave you the dollars to deal with the public safety issue a couple of years ago. That credibility is, in my opinion, probably the, one of the finest things you folks have done. I also believe that, as all people have said, if you don't do this now, the costs are going to be astronomical. There is just no way other than to identify that is a key issue. I'm going to urge you to give the voters of this county, and by the way, I'm a resident of Eugene and a resident of Lane County. I'm going to urge you to give the voters of Lane County a chance to say yes or no. But I'm going to urge the voters of Lane County to understand that it will not be cheaper in the future and no one is going to come to our rescue. Thank you. Thank you. Scott Corey, and he's the last person I have signed up to speak. Good afternoon. Thanks for the opportunity to uh, voice my opinion. I don't have any problem with maintaining roads, but the problem I have is the number of vehicles and the cost to me personally. Um, I'm not a wealthy man, but uh, it's going to cost me way more than $35 to do this. I own one vehicle that was built in this century. That's a 2013 Nissan. My wife drives a 1998 Subaru wagon. I have a 1994 pickup truck because I live out in the country and every once in a while I got to go to the dump. I have a boat. It's a $2,000 boat that I take out to Fern Ridge once a year and I come back and pick it up. I have a utility trailer to haul my tractor if I have to take it to town to get a repair. So when you count it up, I have seven vehicles. I don't think that's extravagant. It goes with what I do as a rural Lane County landowner. Nothing extravagant about that. But my cost is $245 per year. So when you have a plan that doesn't allow an exemption, it's like one fellow said, I can only drive the one car. I don't mind paying for my car. My wife doesn't mind paying for her car. But at some, po at some point, where do we limit that? 
on what the cost is to me personally. I don't mind paying my fair share, but if I have the electorate who doesn't drive those vehicles and doesn't have that kind of exposure, they're going to force me to eat that and I'll pay way more per capita than I would if it was spread out amongst the voters. So here again, for me, it's just an issue of fairness. I got to pay something to have my roads maintained. I understand that. I enjoy living in an educated society. I pay my taxes so that I support schools. I don't mind doing that stuff. But when it comes right down to it, seven vehicles, those aren't outrageous vehicles. That's not an extravagant lifestyle. But that's the cost to me. Thanks for your time. Thank you. So before we move on, is there anyone else that wishes to address the board on, during this public hearing? Seeing none, I'm, I'm going to delay closing the public hearing for now because I'd like to have a short discussion amongst the board about whether or not we want to close the hearing or whether we want to carry the hearing over. My understanding is there was actually an error in the original ordinance as presented to us during the first reading, and we are going to require a third reading just to correct that one single error. Plus, there may be other amendments we want to make to the ordinance uh, today. Uh, so. We will have a third reading of this ordinance, and we won't be able to take final action today on February 10th, which I understand Commissioner Farr may have to participate by telephone, unfortunately. Um, but that, knowing that we're going to have to have um, at least one more reading, the question I have for the board is, do we want to close the public hearing today, or do we want to have a, an additional continued public hearing when we have the third reading on the 10th? Commissioner Sorensen. Uh, I think that um, there were two things that came up, uh, not so much today, but in our previous public discussion of, of this issue. One was the, um, the issue of the voters pamphlet, and I see our elections um, uh, director here. The voters pamphlet, so I, I have additional questions about the voters pamphlet, but also uh, any amendments to this that we're, um, that we're thinking of making to narrow the topic of of um, how the money would be spent. We, we've been talking about how to narrow it to uh, to uh, avoid new construction uh, by the county and have it be just for operations and maintenance and make that clear or more clear. Uh, so if we're going to make those changes, I, I think that we ought to give the public an opportunity to comment on those. So yeah, I would say in direct answer to your question, yes. Okay. Uh other board members, any position on continuing? Commissioner Farr. Yeah, just clarification, to narrow it to operations and maintenance, there, there's no new construction in this, is there? There's, there's nothing in the current code language that restricts it further than the Oregon Constitution. So the Oregon Constitution limits vehicle registration fee dollars for road purposes only. Lane County has, interest, has indicated that the board is interested in maintenance and preservation. If uh, Lane County chose the way the ordinance is currently written, you could use it for new construction. Again, that's very unlikely for a number of reasons, but the uh, Oregon uh, Constitution does allow for that. I'm in favor of extending the uh, public hearing. I would support an extension. Okay, so what I'm going to do is um, I'm not going to close the public hearing at this time so that when we go to the third reading, um, we'll reopen the hearing, public hearing on the ordinance and take additional testimony at that time. So folks that thought today might be the only chance to weigh in, there'll be another opportunity on February 10th. Um, and as we get ready to make the actual motion on the second reading, and if we move forward to a third reading, uh, we'll, we'll in, will also include a time certain for, for, for the uh, continuation of public hearing. So um, I'm just going to, uh, uh, 
Mr. Mokreisky. Uh, uh, Chair Bozovich, I just wanted to, and, and certainly the board I know will have comments and may have clarifications that you'll want to make in response to public comment. We also uh, would be happy to respond to some of the comments that were made if you would like us to, so it's up to you on how yeah, you want that. Yeah, that, that'd be great because I did hear a couple things where um, some folks had some inaccurate information, so it would be good to straighten some of those out. Uh, Commissioner Lichen. Well, and, uh, and I, I appreciate it, uh, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Mokohaiski, thank you as well, because I, that's a question I want to ask. And uh, so, Lydia, if you can maybe explain exactly, <clears throat> this is a tool that was granted to us by the state state legislature. And I heard the comment regarding fairness, and, and um, I think where where that piece is probably more appropriate is, is probably contacting your state senator or your state representative, because that that piece of it would have to be amended by the legislature in order for us to move forward on that. So, Lady, if you could maybe explain, really, because it's pretty narrow what the legislature has granted us as far as this this piece is concerned, the vehicle registration fee. And then I would also like to address the gas tax piece as well, because I think that's also important. So if you could maybe explain the, the law, how it pertains, so so folks maybe can get understanding. Because the, the questions, I uh, to be honest with you, the questions are valid, but the challenge we have as a board of commissioners, we do not have the ability to amend that. So if you maybe could maybe explain that. Sure. Thank you, Commissioner Nikon, Chair Bozovich. Um, it's true that we are Could permitted. you get closer to the mic, Lydia? I'm I beg people your pardon. having trouble hearing you. <clears throat> Thanks very much. Um, as Commissioner Lycan noted, the state has authorized us, and it was actually relatively recently that counties were authorized to be able to charge a vehicle registration fee. The state specifies very clearly how we can apply that fee and to what vehicles we can apply that fee to. So we've heard um, several of the comments that we've heard today. We heard when we went out and we spoke with uh, individual cities, and I think the board had expressed uh, frustration about the fact that we really aren't able to, for instance, exempt uh, people who have multiple vehicles or we aren't able to exempt people who are economic, economically challenged. Um, I think the board would have been open to making some of those amendments, but state law says a county may impose a vehicle registration fee. It can be up to $43. It can be no higher than the state currently allows. It has to be applied to all vehicles. Essentially, if you're paying a state registration fee, then the county vehicle registration registration fee would also apply. It specifies that specific vehicles are exempt. Again, um, school buses are one of the vehicles that are exempt. Recreational vehicles, again, are one of the vehicles that specifically the state lists as being exempt from the vehicle registration fee. Um, so that is just very much set. And um, as you indicated, in order to be able to uh, change that, we would actually have to have the state change the language. With regards to the gas tax, and again, this is something that we heard when we spoke with other people in the community, and it was something that the Roads Advisory Committee discussed in great detail. And um, I'll also note that the county has been evaluating different alternatives really since, as Commissioner Stewart pointed out to me recently, since 2002, 2003. So we really have a lot of information and data on these different options. With regards to a gas tax, it does on the surface appear that it would be um, a good uh, way to generate revenue. As people have said, you would charge people who come in from outside Lane County. The trouble with the gas tax is there, there are several, but one of them for the county is if we apply the ga gas tax within Lane County, the unincorporated areas, it would actually generate a very small amount of funds compared with what the vehicle registration fee would generate. We were looking at about one and a half million dollars. That's in unincorporated Lane County. We have the option of applying a gas tax within the cities and the unincorporated area. Of course, we'd have to work out how to do that with our city partners. There's a number of cities that currently have their own gas tax. So that that has some challenges with our agency partners in terms of be able, being able to work out something that is fair to them. Uh, the other thing with the gas tax is um, there's very clear opposition to implementation of any kind of gas tax, and we've been 
told that if that is something that we move forward with, we will face significant opposition. So for these reasons, again, um, while we, we recognize that this is not a perfect solution, I think we all recognize that, that there are flaws with this that we really don't have any control over. Again, when we look at the fact that the money has just really gone away, we're not mismanaging our money, we just no longer receive those funds that we used to receive, um, we really do need to be able to generate a, a stable funding source. And I'll just make a couple of other comments if um, uh, you would allow with regards to response. Sure. Uh, something else that we've heard a number of times is this issue of studded tires. Um, studded tires, uh, what the ODOT most recent report indicates is that 4% of motor vehicle users use studded tires. That's actually down from about 12% in the past. So it's a small percentage of vehicles. Um, as with other types of uh, funding programs, the cost to administer that would likely eliminate any any benefit. Um, it would cost more to administer than we would be able to generate from funds. The other challenge with the studded tires is if Lane County wanted to impose a fee on studded tires, really the only mechanism we can imagine doing that would be to work out some kind of a, an arrangement with the retail tire sellers so that they would have to collect the fee for us um, and then somehow, again, we'd have to pay them to collect the fee and then send it to us. So that does uh, pose a number of challenges for us. Um, the final thing that I'll comment on is um, the comment about specific lists. So we've heard this again from a number of um, different people and agencies that they're recommending that we do create a specific list of projects that we're going to work on. And we do want to let you know that staff will be developing a list of how we would spend that money, a list of projects of how we would spend that money within the first year. And we're also coordinating with cities, uh, the, the big cities especially in terms of um, being able able to talk to them and have them bring some project lists forward as well if this is something that we move forward with. So um, we are identifying um, roads that, you know, sometimes people forget that the county actually has a lot of roads within cities, Delta Highway, Northwest Expressway, River Road. Um, these are actually county roads within a city facilities, within cities. Um, so again, we are going to be developing that list and provide some specific information on how the funds will be spent within that first year. Thank you. Commissioner Lykin. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And I also heard the comment regarding RV fees. And RV fees are kind of interesting because they actually do not go to ODOT. <laughs> they go to the state parks. And that's where the RV fees go. So when you when you pay RV fees, they actually go to, because of the camp, the camping issue. And, and in fact, I just worked with the legislature on a bill that changed the formula. Because it used to be 65% of all the dollars from RV fees went to the state and 35 to the counties. Well, we've just changed it. So this year it'll be 60-40, but then next year on a permanent basis it'll be 55, 30, or 45, with 45% coming back to the county. So that's where your RV fees go. They do not go to Oregon Department of Transportation. They actually go to the Oregon state parks and uh, and to maintain parks so that's that's how those dollars are divvied up and uh, so and they're great questions and and I think these are these this is going to be important um, if the board decides to move forward on this is is these pieces of information because it can be extremely complicated and so thank you for the response and uh, much appreciated Commissioner Sorensen uh, I just want to Drill down a little bit on the topic of the um, studded tires. You addressed the issue of whether a county can impose a tax or a fee on studded tires and gave a lot of good reasons why it would be hard to do that, very low usage, um, no collection method. Um, but I was interested in the uh, legality of of a county regulating the use of studded tires, not not taxing or trying to get money from the people that use studded tires, but rather regulating when and where they can be used. And and you know, I, I um, know that this year in particular, the amount of snow on Oregon's roads compared to other years is way down. And as President Obama said, well, you know, one year of of uh, of warm weather doesn't mean that we're having you know climate change. But I think it was something like 
12 out of the last 14 years have been the warmest years uh, in in human human history. That maybe does make a, a trend. Well, in this case, if we're seeing uh, smaller instances of snowfall, but we're seeing no change in the state regulation of the use of studded tires, even though low percentage is doing a huge amount of damage, what can we do? Is that, my understanding is that was a function of state preemption, but I just want to clarify that. Uh, Commissioner Sorensen, Chair Bozovich, um, we haven't really looked into, I can't say that I've looked into that question specifically on whether we could, uh, I think what you're asking is could we prohibit the use of studded tires, for instance, in, in Lane County. And like I say, I haven't really, we haven't looked at that question specifically. If the, if the board wants us to, we could certainly look into that for you. Well, it's a separate question from raising revenue. Right. But it is an issue of, of whether or not we're going to have unnecessary damage done to the roads by a very small percentage of people who use these studded tires. Well, as I say, we, we certainly can follow up on that if, if the board um, directs us to do so. The other thing I'll note about studded tires um, is that I don't think anyone's um, going to deny that they cause damage to the roads, but another thing that we learned from an ODOT study is that studded tires really cause damage when they are used on roads of high speed. And so again, the interstate facilities are what really have the most impact from the, from the studded Tires. So again, we really think this is something that could be, really needs to be addressed at the state level, and it certainly is something that gets a lot of attention and a lot of play. Again, we haven't looked into the question about a prohibition. Um, we certainly could do some research for the board. Thank you. I'm going to do something a little unusual here. We did not close the public hearing, and I noticed one of our roads advisory committee members just came in the back door, and I know he was coming from Florence, and was also a first responder, so may have been delayed for various reasons. And I was going to ask him if he wanted the opportunity to address the board, um, and I would reopen the public hearing for him to do so. So if, if you guys will indulge me, I'm going to reopen the public hearing momentarily. And, and if you'll state your name and, and city of residence uh, for the record, and then you'll, you'll have three minutes. Thank you, Chair Bozovich. My name is Sean Barrett. I'm Fire Marshal with Sassavai Fire and Rescue, the chair of the RAC, which is the Lane Road Advisory Committee. Um, I live in Florence, Oregon. <clears throat> I'm going to read a prepared statement. Good afternoon, Chair Bozovich and Commissioners. My name is Sean Parrott. I'm the Chair of Road Advisory Committee known as RAC, which is the Board Citizen Advisory Committee related to road issues. As you know, the RAC has been discussing the reductions in the road fund for several years. Because of the loss of the SRS funding, the CIP program from the county has virtually been eliminated. In fact, we have moved from one year to a two year CIP, due in part to the fact that we do not have projects to consider. Any monies that the county has for roads goes to maintenance and preservation. But as you have heard repeatedly, the current road fund does not have enough money just to continue with maintaining and preserving our roads. The RAC has reviewed and discussed several options to restore revenue to the road fund, and after a lot of discussion and look at many different options, we recommended that the board consider a vehicle registration fee. I'm here today to voice my strong support for moving forward with, to the next step and placing the question of the fee on the ballot. In addition to being the chair of the RAC, I'm also division chief and fire marshal of Sisa Valley Fire Rescue. Maintaining our roads and bridges in good condition is a public safety issue. I see on a daily basis how important Lane County road crews are for safety, not just keeping our roads clear of ice, snow, and landslides, but keeping roads in good condition so that emergency service providers can quickly and safely access people who are in need of our service. So from both, pers both perspective, as the chair of the RAC and also emergency service responder, I strongly encourage you to move forward with the vehicle registration fee. Thank you. Thank you. And I'll offer one more time if there's anyone else that didn't get a chance to speak during the public hearing. Seeing none, we'll, we'll as we discussed it. Oh, sir, if you want to come to, if you, if you want to come to the microphone, state your name and city of residence for the record. I'm Scott Anderson. Sorry, I live in Springfield, and I just 
wanted to put my two cents worth in. I don't think uh, the fee on registrations is the way to go. I would support more gasoline tax so it's more across the board, even to people, because I'm one of the people that have multiple vehicles that would not really benefit from all my vehicles being taxed as such, but I would be more fair to pay whatever I used in fuel expenses or something like that. Just, I don't think it's equitably fair that I have multiple vehicles and I would have to pay to register every one of these vehicles versus people that come through the county buying fuel here to drive on our roads will be sharing the cost the same. I just don't think the people are going to approve it anyway. We might be wasting our time to go in this direction. That's all I have. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. Moving on, um, or going back, we'll, we'll continue this public hearing with the next reading. Um, is there any other questions for staff or comments relating to the public comment from the board? Commissioner Stewart. Thank you, Mr. Chair. We heard, um, and I've heard multiple times from, uh, if it wasn't from fellow commissioners or from statements from the public, the um, uh, potential of it, addition of language that clearly states that the county portion of a registration fee increase would be dedicated to maintenance and uh, operations. I don't have specific language for that, but I do believe that that's a component, of, you know, an addition to the ordinance that should be added uh, if it's supported by my colleagues. I, I would also like to state I want to thank all, all the citizens for coming and the comments. I've received a considerable number through the email. Um, I understand the frustration with this, whether it's the fairness of it. I hope that people are understanding that um, this is it's not a matter of just sitting down and we just picked a, uh, a way to do this. Um, it, we're really constrained by what the legislature allows us to do, whether it's the vehicles. I've, I've been out with staff presenting to cities, hearing from the public. We've had some pretty good turnouts of citizens concerned about this. Um, you know, the concerns with citizens that are retired on fixed incomes, how this uh, fee negatively impacts them when they receive a, as was stated, uh, you know, this is nearly doubling the registration fee when they receive luckily a one, one and a half, 1.7 percent increase in their fixed income. I understand that doesn't mean that, uh, um, you know, I wish there was a way for us to be able to deal with that. And there could be, um, as the conversation may turn it to the legislature as to um, they restructure the way the registration fees are handled, as was mentioned uh, in public comment, that, that could be a component where we could um, share these concerns with the legislature and our, our, our folks that represent us. Um, it's, I also believe that um, you know, eight months a year ago, when we did the initial uh, public outreach, we asked the citizens which uh, which um, mechanism of paying for an increase to fund roads was uh, going to be, uh, you know, their chosen or, or preferred. At the time, if we remember rightly, the price of fuel was nearly four dollars a gallon. And at that point, the citizens weren't receptive. It was it, the polling results or the results we received were way lower for a fuel tax. We fast forward to today. Uh, I would have never been able to predict that the price of fuel would be under two dollars a gallon in select uh, places, and it seems like that you know could be a, a possible uh, way to do it. But. You know, the citizens don't understand that we have complications between the county and the city where cities have gas taxes and other cities don't have gas taxes. We also, um, I, I fully understand that it would capture out of state, out of county folks uh, to contribute to this. We had comments by citizens that live in other counties. Unless they register their car in Lane County, it's they're not going to be paying, they're contributing to this. So I understand that. But I do believe, you know, our citizen committee looked at, I think, 27 different mechanisms for raising 
fees. I've heard from citizens out there that I know they've shared ideas. I don't think we looked at tolling booths and all these other things, but I'll tell you, we heard these, or I did, as we reached out to the citizens. And, you know, I maintain that um, we have a critical asset that is vitally important for whether it is for business retention, if businesses can't meet their needs with the infrastructure and be able to transport their products, or if emergency responders can't respond to the emergency situation to help citizens in need, or right on down the line to the safety of our loved ones traveling on the road, that asset's important. We all agree, and I, and I wish there was a perfect mechanism to be able to establish the payment for that. We had a great one, in my opinion, for nearly 80 years. <clears throat> this county was built and established on uh, timber dollars. Those dollars were plowed back into our community to help pay for our services. And today, uh, with the constraints, we're not able to use that. Whether you're against cutting trees or you're for cutting trees, it's, today it's just not a, a vehicle that's going to ever come back to the levels that, that would support the county like we had. Now, as I try to point out, the road portion dollars that we receive at the county came from the harvest of our federal timber, dollar, timber lands that are managed by the Forest Service. Those are managed on, on multiple use uh, mandate. It's not solely for uh, the harvest of timber. Back then we used to receive $25 million a year. The harvest levels were high. Today we would receive approximately a million and a half. So we used to 600,000. We've gone from 25 million to 600,000 in, in those receipts. We're asking the citizens for, for a funding mechanism that will replace six million dollars that 25 million dollars that's not replacing what we had we have over the 10 years that I've been on this board we, we've seen a reduction in our workforce and public works roads related of uh, over 30 percent of the employees we used to have are no longer with us we have um, reduced our essentially heard from our roads advisory committee we have no capital improvement program the last I think major capital improvement project we did was a partnership with the city of Springfield to build the Bob Straub Parkway which you know hopefully is uh, uh, you know was a good investment for for Springfield and our rural citizens um, you know I don't want to sit here and blab but you know, we are trying to do our due diligence in trying to put together something that um, will be stable funding for the future. Uh, we're still, I'm still fighting for force management. Mr. Lichen is um, on the, placed himself in a very strong position or on the transportation committee for uh, uh, being able to talk about registration fees and fuel taxes and distribution down to uh, our counties involved in the allocation of federal and state funds for capital projects we're trying hard and I hope we can make the case that with the audit form with the citizen review committee with the uh, dedicated language um, that we can make a, a strong case to the citizens that this is the mechanism that seems to meet our needs at this time Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner Sorensen, did you have your hand up? Uh, I just wanted to um, see if what we needed to do to clarify in this next reading what the change, what the changes would be to the um, existing proposal. And um, I mentioned before my uh, interest in in getting the information about the voters pamphlet and the timing of the voters pamphlet and the related uh, topics of, of, of the um, of the fairness of allowing advocates uh, for the tax or for the fee and opposed to the fee to gain access to a public uh, voters pamphlet um, what's the status of that? How, how would we get the language incorporated so that the next time we have the public hearing, the language narrowing the 
the uh, purpose of the measure and how the county's portion of the fee would be spent only on maintenance and not on any new construction of new roads, um, uh, extending the county road network larger than it currently is, uh, things of this sort that, that we're hearing from the public. So if I can spend a moment, I, I have drafted language that will do that in the code restricting the use of the, the county portion of the funds. Um, and I'm, I'll hand out copies to you all for now, and, and um, I don't know if you want to. That's the extra copy. So how, how are we, how are we going to as we read, get this? As we actually make the motion to approve the second reading and hold the third reading, we would actually add this language as part of that motion. For the okay. reading, for the, the approval of the reading today, and I believe there is one other language change that needs to be made that County Council found, where we have to eliminate the word primary. Am I accurate in that? There is there is a reference to a, a May primary election, which was inaccurate. Right, that's in the uh, ordinance itself. That change has been made already, and so what's online. So what's online is accurate there. Part of what you've read today. We just that. might want to make note of that when we actually make the motion. Right. That there is that one correction. Exactly. And what the ordinance says now is it excuse me refers um, the matter to the May 19, 2015. Election. Okay. So that's so that's been corrected in what's published online. So it's only a matter of having to make any amendments relative to the use of the funds. The, the actual correction about the the election date and with the reference to a primary election. Is there a change that needs to be made to say that the um, uh, that the matter is being referred to an election date and that the election will consist of of having an appropriate voters pamphlet and not just to an election date, but describing that this election would have a voters pamphlet as part of the election. So it's not just the election date, it's the fact that you need to have a voters pamphlet if you're going to have an election of the type of election I'm speaking. I do believe the board's already been clear that if we do refer this to the ballot, there will be a voters pamphlet, but we also, I, I was hoping to after to get back to the language on, on the restriction of the use of funds, of county funds, uh, to maintenance and, and repair and operation. We'll get back to that as we're getting close to making a motion. But I would like to, at this time, maybe ask the, the county clerk to come up and have staff address some of your questions around the voters' pamphlet now, um, seeing that she's available to us, so we can make sure we understand how that process will work. Do we need to have it wrapped into the motion and all? So. Commissioner Bozovich, might I make one, one comment first with sure. regards to that? So just to clarify, Commissioner Sorensen, the um, intent of staff, if you so direct us to continue to move forward, is that when we come back next in two weeks on February 10th with a revised ordinance, if you move us to do that. We're also going to bring a board order. The creation of a voter's pamphlet, you actually need to direct staff by board order to do that. So we intend to, again, we're prepared to take all the steps necessary in order to complete the voter's pamphlet per your direction, which we received very clearly on the 3rd. So I just wanted to clarify that's the sort of formal technical way that we'll sort of codify the voter's pamphlet piece. Um, and I'll say very briefly, and then if you have some specific questions for Cheryl, but you had asked some questions with regards to, to timelines. And again, I've mentioned for us we have to get our ballot title completed on the 27th of February, and then the language has to be submitted on the 19th. My understanding is that the date for the candidates, um, the deadline for them would be March 23rd. So if you have any other specific questions, um, I'm sure Cheryl will be happy to address them. On the okay. Panel, so uh, the deadline for candidates is March 27, correct? 23rd. 23rd, excuse me. March 23rd? <laughs> yes, that's Okay. Correct. And then what is the deadline for the uh, proponents and opponents to submit materials to Lane County elections for inclusion in the voters' pamphlet? Chair Bozovich, Commissioner Sorensen, that deadline is also March 23rd, and according to Lane Code, those would need to be submitted by noon on that date. Noon on? March, March 23rd. Okay. And then uh, in terms of the county appointing a committee of, of uh, citizens to review the proposed ordinance and the measure, 
what's the deadline on the appointment of the committee and then the committee meeting and then the uh, committee coming to a decision about the explanatory uh, portion of it? Well, the explanatory statement would have to be submitted at the same time as the measure, um, that same time frame. So I would imagine that you would make the decision to appoint that committee earlier than that. I don't believe there's a specific deadline in lane code or statute for appointing that committee. It just states that you do need to complete that task. Okay. And if the county, what's a reasonable period of time to appoint this committee? Uh, to I'm not sure if Lydia wants to address that, if that's been discussed at this point. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Sorensen, Chair Bozovich, yes, that's, uh, in order to appoint the committee, that's why we're recommending that we would come back on February 10th. We can either provide some recommended names uh, for committee members, which is uh, what we would like to be able to do, we, or we could also write the order um, such that the um, board chair could uh, um, appoint those people because we really do need to get this committee. I mean, it, we've done this before when we did the uh, sheriff's levy. The same process was used even though we didn't create a formal voters pamphlet. We did have a committee that did create the explanatory statement that was, was submitted in the informational booklet. So again, what we recommend is that if you want to, uh, to continue moving forward, you direct us to come back on February 10th with a board order. Um, we can generate some names in the coming week um, if you'd like us to do that or you can submit those to us. It's really at the direction of the board. Any other questions about the voters pamphlet while we have the clerk here or other processes relative to the election process? Uh, Mr. Chair, one more question. What is the cost of the voters pamphlet? Chair Bozovich, Commissioner Sorensen, um, there is a wide range. I have been uh, working with some vendors that we would utilize and consider, and so I don't have an exact number for you. I think uh, Lydia may have submitted some es some possible estimates. So uh, knowing that we have that direction to move forward and, and assuming that the measure goes forward, we'll be getting and submitting those costs uh, to you for consideration, So, or for the record. Okay. Uh, we don't really know uh, until we see how many statements are submitted by people that are in favor or opposed to this measure, nor do we know how many candidates for the various school board offices that are going to be in that same election, whether they will submit or not. That's correct. Okay. We know that we have 66 districts that would be eligible if, for measures. We know of at least four that have contacted our office that are considering putting a measure on the ballot. There could be others. Um, so those information would also be in the voters pamphlet. We have approximately 200 positions that will be on the ballot for the May election. So any of those individuals would be available to put in candidate information. Of course, that would increase the size of the voters pamphlet which would, of course, would directly increase the cost for that pamphlet. So that's why the estimate is, is, that has been provided is really a speculation because it, it's, it's just really unknown how big the pamphlet would be at this time. Any other questions for the, the clerk? Thank you for being available to us. Thank you. I, I, we, I knew that quest, those questions were going to be coming up, so I appreciate you taking the time. So um, <clears throat> moving forward, we have the, the version online has been corrected relative to the correct reference on the election date and all that. Um, and as we heard, we don't need to have the actual voters pamphlet part of the ordinance. Um, that actually will be a separate order that will also come back to us on February 10th. Um, what we need to probably discuss now is whether or not um, we want to add the um, the extra sentence to the preamble on the county vehicle registration fee uh, clarifying uh, the, the inability of us to use a registration fee for uh, sheriff patrol and then also item five on the use of revenue that restricts the county's use of the revenue to repair, maintenance, and operation of roadways and bridges um, in Lane County. Um, sorry, somebody's trying to call me. <laughs> It's the bad thing about using a cell phone for a timer. Um, so, Commissioner Stewart. So I have a question. I guess this is the first I've 
heard about the actual verbiage about law, law enforcement. But it's my understanding under the current um, state laws, we're not eligible to use that money. Is that correct? That is correct. That's just a clarification, so which was one of the questions that was, could the fee, regi county registration fee be transferred to the sheriff's office? And this clarifies that. So it's just a clarification, but under state law, it's not legal. The only thing that my understanding that has been allowed to be used of uh, road funds was the forest, the federal forest dollars. Correct. And that sunsets my understanding in 16, 2016, is that right? I believe I believe that's correct. The, the so, state law, I'm sorry, Chair yeah. uh, Bozovich, Commissioner, the state law that allows the uh, use of federal SRS payments for patrol sunsets in 2016, which is part of our legislative agenda to extend that. Okay. Thank you. So um, I, I made a very similar proposal to this language last time, but um, I wasn't seeing that, that there was full board support for it. It sounds like there's been some some additional support towards having this restriction. I, I wanted to see if there was anyone that had any um, real objection to adding this language uh, or any concerns about it. Commissioner Lykin. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So, um, Lydia, maybe you can help me out on this. Uh, I, I think I, I stated in the last meeting that, um, well, let's just put it out there. You know, the city of Springfield likes to build things, including roads, infrastructure. We're not interested in eliminating that piece. So if we put this restriction in, does this, does this then uh, potentially cause Lane County not to be in a position to offer up a potential match if the state were to come in and want to do a project? Um, or is there other additional funds where the state, where the Lane County can reach into and maybe not this one? I guess maybe that's how I want to ask that question. Sure. Um, the language that's being proposed would limit the county in terms of how we could use our funds, and that would include how we could match our dollars for the vehicle registration fee. The county also receives state highway funds, so we do receive a portion of gas taxes. So that funding, the, the other portion of the road fund, would still be available to be able to leverage projects um, as you're describing. So we would still be able to do that, but with the language that we're proposing, we couldn't use these specific vehicle registration fee dollars. I asked that question because I want to make, make sure that we're not cutting off the end of our nose here. And uh, also, I think it's important anytime you do a ballot language and, and you move things forward, you want to KISS. You want to keep it as keep it very simple, and I and I so I have a little bit of concern on that on there as well. Now I don't foresee this particular Oregon Transportation Commission coming in and asking for matches, uh, at least right now. I just don't see that. In fact, if anything, they're probably going to be fine with even if if we offered up staff for a match. <clears throat> I think the days of Stuart Foster, and uh, even though he was a great friend of mine the late Randy Pape, they, they ran the Oregon Transportation Commission with an iron fist. And uh, they expected a match, otherwise you didn't get the funds. And I ran into that, believe me, I saw that firsthand with the construction of I-5 Beltline in Interchange. A lot of that construction going on out there uh, when the hospital was being built, that uh, they used that. Well, guess who came to the rescue? It was actually Lane County came to the rescue for the offered up the $15 million match required by local governments. Eugene or Springfield, neither one had it. And so that's why I asked that question. Now, again, uh, I think right now we're, we're fine. I don't expect the Oregon Transportation Commission, this body, to offer up these kind of dogmatic approaches. And uh, so from that perspective, but I, did, I want to make sure that to clarify that if there was a match required that we would have the ability to maybe put something forward. I expect there could be some potential construction going on in infrastructure uh, because of what's going on with Franklin. Uh, it's not all, and it, while it's under the planning jurisdiction of the city of Springfield, there's plenty of Lane County property there. So I just want to make sure that we're, we're, we're not cutting ourselves off here. And so I think that that offers up a good clarification. So I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Um, 
Any other questions or comments on the proposed language change? So I, I feel it's important to include this because I, I think one of the things that's really important if the board does choose to place this on the ballot is that we do it in a, in a unanimous fashion. And I did hear from some of the board members that it was particularly important to have some limitation on the county use of the funds. And I think this code language, it's not ballot language, so we won't be, we'll be able to keep the ballot language, okay. you know, they keep the KISS method in, in, the, in the ballot language, okay. but this actual code language that will be adopted if the ballot is, is measure is approved is, is restricts us from new construction. And I think we would be doing this anyway, even without the code language, because we're only talking about filling six million of a nine million dollar hole in our maintenance and operation budget. So anything we were trying to use for new roadways is going to come at the cost of maintenance and operations that were already three million dollars short, projected to be three million dollars short, even if we were to put this on the ballot and pass it. So I, you know, I, I want to be clear that that really this is almost redundant language for us, but I understand the guarantee because we had a great report this morning from our auditors on the jail levy fund. You know, we all know the history of Lane County and passing ballot measures, and the reason we had that 0 for 13 history was one time before that first zero, a previous board played a shell game with some, some a revenue uh, measure that passed. And, and you know, took general fund money away from a department that got the new revenue and spent it somewhere else. And the voters remember that. I mean, 20 some years later, I was hearing about that out there. So we made sure we put the jail levy together with that auditing function and specifically tied how we're going to use it, just like I think this helps folks believe that. And we're including that same auditing in this, this ballot measure which I think is so important to the voters. I mean, it was so great to listen to a third party um, accounting firm this morning tell us that we did exactly what we told the voters we were gonna do with the jail levy. We made six various promises on how we we're gonna use that money, including that we weren't going to limit or take away general fund money from the jail as part of that ballot measure. And they, they confirmed that we had not done that. And, and that's really, you know, hopefully what we'll see with this is we'll put this money in a special revenue fund. There'll be the distribution back to the state for administrative costs, which is infinitesimal because we're using the vehicle registration fee. It's the lowest administrative cost of any revenue source we could come up with. And then we'll have, you know, show the 40% we're transferring out to the cities, and then we'll be able to demonstrate that the rest of that money is being used for maintaining our existing roadway and, and bridge system, as we're describing here. And I think having that little bit of extra added language in the code just assures that when we do the audit, that there's that requirement in the code for the auditors to look at and say, yes, they did just what they said they were going to do. And, that, and I think that's an important piece of transparency and accountability with the voters that we've established in the jail levy and that we want to continue with this. this. Um, so are there any other just general um, questions, concerns from the board about the, uh, the proposed ordinance as we're getting close to a second reading motion and, and, a, and a setting a third? Commissioner Lycan. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So not necessarily to the ordinance, but uh, uh, Commissioner Stewart brought up something I thought was very important, and that was the the piece on the, the timber revenue that used to come back to Lane County. So, Lydia, if you could maybe share quickly, I and, and you may have been working with the city of Eugene then. I, I don't know, because when I was mayor my first term, I just remember maybe if you could uh, share a little bit about the shared uh, opportunity that Lane County had with the cities back in the because in a sense this is what this is uh, by written by state law this is this is money coming in but 40 percent goes out to the cities and I think it's important because when Lane County was receiving 25 million dollars five million of that was going back to the cities and uh, for operation and maintenance I know in my first term as mayor our backlog was that 
was absolutely zero. So I, I don't know if you have anything else you want to add on that because I, that's that's an important component, I think, in this whole thing. But I was really appreciative that Commissioner Stewart brought up the amount of money that used to come back to Lane County. I, it was was enormous when it came to road funds. And uh, so I don't know if you have anything you want you have anything to add on that or not. Uh, Commissioner Lyke and Chair Bozovich, uh, un unfortunately for me, I think I, I was uh, not at the county during those um, those days when we had the, those, heydays. the heyday, right. I, I, I hear about them and they sounded really good to me. Um, but it is my understanding, as you indicate, that um, we received about $25 million and we distributed not by any state mandate. We weren't required right. to do that, but we did share um, about $5 million with the cities um, in Lane County uh, to be able to address the needs that they had as well. I don't know if uh, Marsha Miller wants to provide any more detail. Um. Uh, Mr. Chair, I can fill in some info here. You could. Yep. Go ahead. Um, our, his, our resident historian. I remember a time when, as board chair, I would meet with the mayors, and I think maybe Commissioner Farr or maybe all of you have and been in this role of meeting with the mayors and discussing with them how much money the county would be giving them each year. The, the amount wasn't particularly, um, you know, it was going down as the threat of, of uh, declining revenue. And I do remember the board did vote to completely eliminate the money that the city's got, but, uh, you know, there was a time when Lane County would help the cities fund their, and in fact, I think it's Westfer still has some big, well, you know more about this, but they have uh, a small amount of municipally owned roads, or maybe none, and so one. So they're kind of stuck. They get this money and they can't really spend it, so there's this there's one of the 12 cities that yeah. ends up having this surplus uh, because of the method that was used to compute the share. But uh, it was a very important thing to Eugene and Springfield in particular, but also all the other incorporated cities. All gone. <laughs> Thank you. So I thought of two quick questions that maybe if you can't answer off the top of your head you can bring back the answers next week um, there was a lot of questions about multiple vehicles and particularly about people that collect classic cars is it my understanding that historic plates are exempt from the county vehicle registration fee that is correct so if, if somebody could get their classic car designated historic they wouldn't be paying this this additional fee Correct. That is one yeah. of the exemptions. I'm not, I guess the other question might be, what's it take to get a historic tag in Oregon? As, what, what age limit or whatever? Um, and then the other question I heard about was vehicles like in rural properties, um, you know, the, the, the person that has the $500 pickup truck to make dump loads or, or whatever, um, there's also an exemption for farm vehicles. Is, is that correct? There is an exemption for farm vehicles, and staff would be happy to bring some information back to the board in two weeks with regards to what constitutes a farm vehicle and, and how one gets a designation for a historic or a classic vehicle, so I can follow up with you. Okay. I just wanted to, to maybe people may not have been aware that there is, is, is a couple classifications that are exempt that may impact folks with multiple vehicles. Um, I wanted to address one item you know that that I've heard out there which and this in particular um, you know came up with the gas tax um, in Florence uh, as they gave us unanimous support of this their concern was how is this going to impact their ability to pass a local gas tax because they had had a proposal that failed last uh, November but they want to put it back on for the following November and what they were planning to do was to maybe lower their proposal just enough to make up if we did pass the vehicle registration fee they'd lower their proposal by enough that, that this, the same amount of money would be raised with the additional money coming in from the county registration fee and doing a slightly lower either gas tax or they have a monthly transportation fee on their water bill um, we have a similar situation. If the state does, you know, what I'm hearing is, well, the state's kind of working on this, and the federal government's talking about a new gas tax and all that. 
we're not set in stone if we do take this to the voters and they pass this and, and we, we adopt a $35 vehicle registration fee. If for some miracle, Salem and, and Capitol Hill come up with you know, an extra $10 million in funding for, for that, that gets distributed to the county road fund, we have the ability to terminate collection of this fee or to reduce it by, by ordinance at any time, don't we? Yes, you do. It, it's it, it. You know, I've heard discussions about you know it's a permanent and all that stuff. Nothing the board passes by ordinance is necessarily permanent. Yeah, you know, we can change it any time. In fact, we're we had discussion this morning about the fact that we are going to change our tobacco retail licensing ordinance because we realize there's some corrections that need to be made, and it's just when when we're going to be doing that. So that was an ordinance that was passed in December, and we're already talking about fixing it sometime before July 1st. So um, nothing is, is ever permanent when it comes to making law or, or uh, government. I just wanted to, to bring that out in, in public. So are there any other comments that the, the board has? Is there somebody that would like to attempt to make a motion? <laughs> Commissioner Stewart. Um, the only thing I'd like to ask staff first of, do we want a time certain on the continued hearing? Okay. Ran out of battery. Does that work? Okay. This one died. Um, I think we certainly can do a time certain. It was helpful today to have a time certain. You, you may, let me say the answer is yes, definitively, because uh, Commissioner Farr uh, will be traveling to Washington, D.C. with our United Front team. Um, he'll be on East Coast time, three hours ahead. And so our hope was, I think we were thinking around 2 o'clock. I don't know if, Alex, 2, two o'clock, 1.30, 2 o'clock would be a good time because then Commissioner Farr is likely to be done with those meetings and participate here. The other thing I just want to mention is um, as you make a motion, you, you have not introduced or, or approved the amendment that you had discussed. So if there was a desire to include that uh, as part of the ordinance to be brought back on the 10th, then you would need to actually, as I understand, take action, a motion, a second, and a vote on the amendment. Right, you'll need to read into the record verbatim what it is you want to have from draft. Right, and that was my understanding. So I, I was just, um, I didn't know if he was going to read that into the record as part of his motion on the second reading, approving the second reading with that amendment and read it into the record. Is that satisfactory? Uh, yes. Okay. Yes. And then, and, uh, um, and then set the uh, third reading and public hearing for February 10th. Um, it sounds like 1.30 works for the time certain. Does that work for you, Commissioner Farr? I think 1.30, 4.30 will be fine, yeah. Well, you could do yeah. it at 5 o'clock and then uh, you'd 5 may be easier, but... Uh, 5 o'clock our time may be 8 o'clock. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, we'll keep you up till midnight on the East Coast. Uh, you know, and that's, I guess that's a uh, question for the board, too, about setting the time certain for the next hearing. One of the concerns I always hear is we set these hearings during work hours and whether or not we want to set the hearing for after work hours. Um, is a question for the board to answer more than for staff, knowing that we have to have Commissioner Farr participating three hours ahead of us. My, my time's fully flexible. Okay. So that's maybe a discussion for the board whether they think there's a necessity. I, I think we got fairly good attendance today at 1.30, so um, I'm, I'm not terribly concerned about that, but if there was a desire to change the hour of the the public hear the continued public hearing, I'd be willing to consider that. I'm not seeing a lot of interest in that, so take it away, Commissioner Stewart. Oh, hold on. Just Just one, sorry, one, one additional comment that we do have on our Engage with Lane County website, engagelanecounty.org. Uh, we have this question about um, uh, $35 vehicle registration fee on there. So there's an opportunity in addition to the regular form of sending an email to commissioners at LCBCC, um, which you can find on our homepage at lanecounty.org. You can email commissioners directly comments. You can also click on Engage with Lane County or go to engagelanecounty.org and submit comments and we'll collect all of that information that we receive on that website and present it to the board on the 10th as well. Thank you. If we're ready, I'll attempt. 
be happy for corrections here. So at this time, I'd like to move the second reading and set the third reading and public hearing for Ordinance 15-01 for February 10th, time certain of 1.30, with the following two amendments to the ordinance. The first is under 15.672 County Vehicle Registration, adding the following sentence, any revenue generated from local vehicle registration fees is not eligible to be expended for patrolling Lane County roads, county law enforcement officials under the Chapter 75 Oregon Laws 2012. And the second item of uh, amendment would be under 15.678 use of the revenue, add an additional number, which would be five, the net revenue received by the county from the fees collected under sections 15.670 to 15.682 of this code must be dedicated to the county road fund and is permitted for the to be used only for the repair, maintenance, and operation of roadways, roadways and bridges within Lane County. Thank you. Do we have a second? Second. <laughs> Thank you. Discussion to the motion. Commissioner Lichen. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, from a personal standpoint, I'm, I'm personally not, I don't believe that this language is actually needed. Uh, but it's pretty obvious that uh, there's some commissioners here that would like to have this in order to be supportive. Um, and so for that reason, I'll, I'll, vote, I'll vote, vote for the amendment. Um, I believe that this, uh, the way that staff has worked on this, the way it's been brought before the board, um, I think, in my opinion, has been very good all the way through. And I, I, I just... <clears throat> But if this is what's needed to move this thing forward, and as Commissioner Bozovich, I think he's, Chair Bozovich is exact, exactly right. I think, unlike the public safety, this is this is going to need a unanimous support by the board uh, to be able to move forward on this as, as far as uh, sending this, this out to the voters. And uh, I just wanted to be on record to say that. I'm not going to get in the way. Um, uh, of this because it's pretty apparent that in order to move this forward uh, some members of this board needs, needs to have this language and, and that's and that's fine so I just uh, that's all I have to say thank you Commissioner Sorensen uh, thank you very much I think that uh, advancing this measure um, is an important step you know the um, cost to city residents of having inadequately maintained roads is, in my opinion, um, it's more costly to not have this, this fee than to have it. And that's because of the increased cost it takes to maintain a vehicle when uh, city and county roads aren't um, uh, in good repair. So the additional fee um, you know, really is is going to be something that, in the long run, does save people money, and I think that's a reason to advance this further. Another reason is that I've been reassured numerous times here that we will get a, a county voters pamphlet, and um, and I also think it's been an improvement to this uh, measure and the additional public hearing we'll have on it to uh, you know, make sure that, that what we're dealing with is the maintenance of the roads and bridges and city streets, and that's really the fundamental purpose of it. And uh, I think that's something that uh, the public is, um, it has a right to vote on. So uh, I'm glad we're making these, these improvements today. Commissioner Farr. Uh, Commissioner Bozvich, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, subsequent to this vote, I'll be stepping out to attend a meeting up at uh, Eugene City Hall. All right, I was aware of that, so thank you for, for notifying us. Um, any other discussion to the motion? I just want to say that um, I think that giving the voters the choice of having local control of their funding for road maintenance is an important question to put out to the voters. And um, this is really about preventing that backlog of, of deferred maintenance from building up. Just like you know, not painting your house and having to replace siding is much more expensive than painting it in the first place. Roadways do the same thing. If you don't maintain them, they cost you a lot more in the long run. 
and ultimately five years from now that backlog will be competing with all other services for attention financially from the county and it's much easier to prevent building that backlog with a small three dollar a month increase in a vehicle registration fee than it is to put that off and I think this is a fiscally responsible action to take a fiscally conservative action to take and I also believe that um, this is really about local control because if we wait for the state to do something it's going to be divided up 50 percent to the state 30 percent to the county and 20 percent to the cities whereas a local fee gets 60 percent to the county and 20 percent and 40 percent to the cities and we maintain control over it so we won't be spending one percent of any projects we do under this vehicle registration fee on art um, so I, I really think the local control aspect is very important so with that any other discussion Commissioner Farr just very briefly I spent uh, Thursday and Friday morning at Willamette High School talking to the uh, kids in the civics class and one of the things that they wanted to talk about was road maintenance and the kids in the class uh, independently said if you don't fix it it'll cost more to fix it later uh, just like a rip in my shirt <laughs> if I don't put that one stitch in later I need nine stitches so uh, it's not a difficult concept to understand that you don't fix it you're gonna pay more to fix it later thank you Commissioner Stewart. I'd just like to add, and I, hopefully I'm not holding you up, but um, you know, as I stated, I, I went to five cities uh, in, in uh, East Lane County, and uh, it was pretty clear that um, this is going to be difficult for rural citizens to support from a standpoint which was, I think, articulated great. I mean, when you're a rural resident and you live out on some property, you got multiple vehicles, you got multiple trailers, uh, just so that you can keep the maintenance up on your on your your uh, site. Uh, I mean, it's just like talking. I have parents and on fixed incomes, and this will be a challenge for them. And uh, so I get that, and I understand that. But on the flip side, we have to we have this huge responsibility, and if we don't do this, um, you know, at least give the citizens the opportunity to say yes or no. Um, I'd be um, derelict in my duties. To watch the infrastructure uh, crumble around us, so um, I, I know it's difficult, and the citizens that I represent, this is going to be hard on them. Um, and an article that I read uh, just, I believe, yesterday in Oregon Live um, was the fact that um, two of the cities in um, Lane County are represented as being uh, the ten poorest cities in the state of Oregon. Uh, one was Cottage Grove, and the other one was Florence. Um, both rural communities, both with the average median income of $30,000 a year per household. And um, I understand the difficulties about how to make ends meet. And I, and I'm, and I respect that. I just, um, I hope that, um, you know, we have done our due diligence, which I know we have. We've looked at all the options. If I, you know, I compared my vehicle uh, if I commute from Cottage Grove to Eugene every day, which I do, um, I save actually about 50% of the cost of what I pay in gas tax. Um, I would be paying over $60 a year in gas tax for my personal vehicle. So anybody else that's commuting from Cottage Grove, <coughs> Florence to Eugene, uh, Oak Ridge to Eugene, you will save money by by paying it this way over the vehicle uh, fuel tax. But that being said, I know it's easier to do it a few pennies at a time instead of a larger check every two years. Thank you. Commissioner Lykin. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And so what we're voting on is the additional language. Is this correct? And the sec approving the second reading. Right. And the, the, the reading second. and moving it forward to yeah. February 10th. And... Uh, uh, and then that February 10th is likely when we would make the decision of whether we're going to refer to this to the voters or not. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yeah. With, because we have the change in language yes. proposed here and also the change in language that staff uh, has already yes. fixed about the, the election date, we need a third reading before we can actually vote to place it on the ballot. And we will at that, at that meeting also have a board order relative to the uh, um, the voters pamphlet and dealing with the appointment of uh, the, the committee to write the, 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 uh, our, the ex explanatory statement but, and um, 
Yeah, I think there's. Uh, and we'll also bring back the ballot language. Yeah, and the actual ballot language. Sorry, that's. I knew there was one more thing I was missing. So it's we'll have like a, a slew of items that will be after we do the third reading, hearing, continued hearing, and take a vote. Of course, if we choose not to place it on the ballot, those <coughs> follow-up items will probably be crossed off the agenda. But those will be immediately following um, the third reading and, and continued public hearing. Commissioner Sorensen. Um, and this is a question for Mr. Clark. After the conclusion of the next public hearing and the board deliberation and the vote, uh, then we're allowed to make the, the referral decision then. We don't have to wait any further after that public hearing. That, that's, <coughs> excuse me, that's correct. Okay. Um, at that time, the, the way the ordinance is set up, the board will be voting to approve the ordinance, um, and part of that ordinance is referred to the ballot, and therefore the effectiveness of what you've approved is contingent on the vote to the vote. Okay, but, but very good. Since we did a reading of the verbatim language being added, uh, 13 days later you can approve it or not. As you okay. Said. All right. Thank you so much. Any further comment? So I'm going to call for the vote on the amended ordinance as a second reading and setting the third reading and continued public hearing for February 10th. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Passes unanimously. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. So with that, we can get on with the agenda. And I apologize to everybody waiting for agenda items. And we are moving onward to item 12B, which is Lane County Planning Commission annual report for 2014. And we have Matt Laird, land management manager. Mr. Laird. Good afternoon, commissioners. Chair Bozovich. Okay. I'm here today uh, acting as the uh, Lane County Planning Director and giving the Lane County Planning Commission 2014 annual report. And some might ask, well, why are we receiving this report? And because it's Article 2, Section 3 of the Lane County Planning Commission bylaws require that an annual report be provided to the Lane County Board of Commissioners. Uh, the Lane County Planning Commission is a volunteer advisory committee appointed by the Board of County Commissioners to advise the Board of County Commissioners on land use matters. In addition, the Commission functions as the Citizen Involvement Advisory Committee for Lane County pursuant to ORS 197.160 in all aspects of comprehensive planning. The Lane County Planning Commission addresses the needs of the community by providing a forum for the careful review and analysis of local priority issues of land use and environmental concern. Issues identified through the Planning Commission public hearing process help to develop a complete and accurate public record for use by the Board of Commissioners in their deliberations. Citizen involvement is an integral part of the Lane County Planning Commission process. By conducting public hearings on land use proposals in accordance with state and local procedures, the Lane County Planning Commission considers testimony from interested parties, affected agencies, and neighbors prior to making recommendations to the Board of County Commissioners. In this capacity, the Planning Commission fulfills a vital role in a citizen's involvement process as articulated by the statewide planning goal number one. One of the things that our Planning Commission has done recently to encourage citizen involvement is they've added a new section to their meeting agendas labeled public comment, very similar to what the board does. And this is where the public can come in and speak to the Planning Commission on any land use matter that's not on the agenda for that meeting. And it's typically uh, very similar to the uh, board, it's limited to three to minutes, five minutes, something like that. Uh, the approximate number of public participants who gave testimony in public hearings and during public comment periods for 2014 was 24. And in 2013, that number was 28. And we got uh, those numbers, or we generated those numbers by looking through the minutes and seeing who spoke. So that's, it's not how many people showed up. Often there's probably double that number actually in attendance. Uh, this year, the uh, 
Planning Commission has asked the board uh, for some their considerations. Uh, first of all, to continue to work on the long-range work plan and the scoping projects in particular that were listed on there. And number two, they've asked uh, that planning staff monitor the ongoing consultation between the National Marine Fisheries Services, NIMS, and the Federal Emergency Management Agency, FEMA, regarding the pending biological opinion for endangered salmonids and report the resulting changes to the National Flood Insurance Program. So they've asked planning staff to keep an eye on that topic and when something starts to come out on that topic to report back to them and ultimately back to you. Officers for 2014, uh, Ryan Sisson uh, served as the chair and that was his second year in a row for 2014 and Larry Thorpe is the vice chair. We have two new planning commissioners in 2014, uh, Commissioner Dwight Coons first meeting was in March and Commissioner Jason Thiesfield's first meeting was in October. The 2014 Lane County Planning Commission is the following people. Ryan Sisson, Larry Thorpe, Nancy Nichols, James Peterson, Dennis Sandow, Charles Conrad, Randy Ledick, Gary Rose, Dwight Kuhn, and Jason Thiesfeld. The Lane County Planning Commission met 15 times in 2014 and held six public hearings which equates to, you know, roughly, if you say, three hours of meeting, 15 meetings, that's 45 hours just in meetings. Uh, and that doesn't even include um, the amount of prep time prior to meetings and reading the packets. And I will tell you that some of the packets are very thick. So uh, well over a week's worth of time if they were to sit down and do it was volunteered by um, the Planning Commission members. Um, 2014 highlights. Uh, there were three meetings on small city planning. Uh, we had the City of Florence Transportation System Plan, the City of Coburg Transportation System Plan update, and the City of Coburg Urbanization Study. There were two meetings uh, regarding the Eugene Springfield Metro Plan Coordination. There was one meeting on a rural comprehensive plan amendment from agricultural land to marginal land. There were five meetings regarding the updates to lane codes, chapter 13, 14, and 16. And there were three work sessions that covered various training topics such as public meetings laws, land use decisions, findings of fact, floodplain, coal five inventory, and marginal land plan amendment and zone change. In your report, table three, uh, beginning on page seven, outlines the uh, specific meetings. I'm not going to go through each one of these, but if you wanted to know what happened on a certain day, it's in table three. And then if you come down uh, to page nine, uh, table four, the difference between table four is it actually shows uh, some of the board actions that happened in 2014. So sometimes uh, the planning commission might make a decision, say, in 2012, and they're still waiting to hear the outcome. Uh, in this case, the first one that is the um, uh, Goshen, which is on Luba remand right now. But then you can see some of the other ones that happened in uh, 2013 were approved by the board. And so the Planning Commission asked us to add that section, oh, a year or so ago. They said, you know, we'd like to know sometimes what happens to these things after they, they go beyond us. And so that's what this table's all about. And then finally, uh, something kind of rare, we, this doesn't happen very often, but the Springfield Planning Commission made recommendations to the Board of County Commissioners. Uh, pursuant to the 1986 intergovernmental agreement uh, between Lane County and the City of Springfield, Lane County transferred the legislative and land use authority of the Lane County Planning Commission to the Springfield Planning Commission for the urbanizable portion of the Springfield urban growth boundary which falls outside of the incorporated city limits of Springfield. So acting as both the Springfield and Lane County Planning Commission, the Springfield Planning Commission held the following public <coughs> hearing in 2014, and that public public hearing was in September and it was regarding the amendments to the Glenwood refinement plan. So that came through the Springfield Planning Commission. Um, 
In closing, I would just like to give a big thank you to all of the members of the Lane County Planning Commission for spending their many, many hours volunteering for their community. That's all I have today. Thank you. Any, Commissioner Sorensen. I just wanted to ask a little bit about the public involvement component uh, of the work of the Planning Commission. Could you talk a little bit about that? Uh, well, as I said, they added a new section uh, that's on all of their agendas now for the general public to come speak. And then they also serve as they hold all the public hearings. So the public is welcome to attend, give testimony. Okay, so we have, we have the three-minute public comment period uh, added to the agenda, which wasn't previously added. Yeah, it wasn't it wasn't listed on the okay. agenda. They they kind of informally had always allowed it, but it wasn't okay. on the agenda. So if somebody went in advance and looked at the agenda, they wouldn't have seen it. Okay. Now they will. And then we have obviously the public meeting component that people can see the meeting and observe it and watch it. Uh, and is there any other uh, components to a public involvement function of the Lane County Planning Commission besides those two? Well, Those I would two say that uh, generally speaking, in their in their daily lives, I'm sure they come across people and who ask them yeah, what's going on with the know, planning commission, friends, family, acquaintances. Okay. I'm sure they talk to them. Do, would you describe our effort as being um, bigger or comparable to other uh, public um, outreach efforts? Is there anything else that they could do, knowing that they are citizens, knowing that they are volunteers? Is there more that they could do to involve the public in the policy aspects of their responsibilities? I'm sure there's always more that people could do. Mm -hmm. um, generally speaking, I think that the Lane County Planning Commission does a a good job and as far as I know Lane County in general uh, their public citizen involvement program mm -hmm. is the same as other counties in the state of Oregon um, newsletter here's what's going on at the Lane County Planning Commission yeah we don't have that okay is that costly or difficult um, it would be additional resources yeah All right. ones that we don't have right now All right okay Thank you. So uh, before I call on Commissioner Stewart, um, I just want to mention that one of the things uh, when the uh, citizen involvement um, came up about three years ago from some of the uh, Planning Commission members, from that day forward as we've interviewed um, potential new members for the Planning Commission, We've always made sure that they understood that that was a secondary role um, under state law that was part of the, the planning commission was our citizen involvement committee, and that if they're accepting the planning commission appointment, they're also accepting that appointment. So we've been very clear to any new members and the existing members having been through uh, some of the review of, of that goal um, one uh, uh, review that we did a couple years ago well understand that role of the Planning Commission and 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 as we've recommended folks to be appointed um, the subcommittee that's done those interviews that's been an important aspect of that interview is is do they are they aware of that role are they accepting of that role where they actually become the advocate for people to be involved in the, the land use and planning process in Lane County Commissioner Stewart, did you have a question? <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't have a question. A couple things. I would add, as a as a member of the local official advisory committee to LCDC, I was able to sit in and on a conversation about citizen involvement and a report by their citizen involvement committee to the LCDC. You know, really, um, counties are all across the board. I would say we're probably maybe in the upper level of trying to do uh, citizen involvement. Um, you know, the board has uh, required at times uh, where we were the only county that required a public hearing on all the Measure 37 claims. That's over and above what, it, you know, no other county did that. So um, that's factored in the citizen involvement and trying to engage. 
um, we sent out recently, I think, um, notices on our code changes that went um, pretty far-reaching for citizen involvement. Um, so I, I think, you know, my experience is, Commissioner Swords, and that um, we're probably in the upper reaches of trying to outreach to citizen involvement or get citizen involvement. Uh, the other statement I wanted to say is I, I too, wanted to thank our um, uh, citizen members on the uh, Lane County Planning Commission. When you look at their attendance, uh, it's certainly not perfect, but out of 15 meetings, uh, the attendance that uh, and the meetings that um, by the time they became commissioners um, on that committee is very well. I mean, one, two meetings missed in the entire year um, by individuals, and so when you're volunteer time and as you stated the uh, sometimes uh, reams of information that you have to study um, on a case I, I want to say thank you for for uh, their input and their involvement and and uh, they're doing a great job so thanks Commissioner Likin. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Matt, uh, so I, I thought it was interesting when you mentioned about the uh, Springfield Planning Commission, in a sense, becoming the Lane County Planning Commission when you're talking about Glenwood. Is that something that's been done before? Is this the first time, or, or at least to, in your in your recent memory here? Or? It doesn't happen often. Uh, I think it has been done before. It just doesn't seem to come up that often. But in that case, it did. It was for that refinement plan yeah. that was outside of the city limits. Right. And so typically, uh, the Springfield Planning Commission's work includes both city limits and outside city limits. Which I understand, because Glenwood is part of the Springfield planning jurisdiction, yeah. even though there's still some pockets of it that are in, in Lane County or unincorporated. So I was just curious if that had if that had been used before, because from this pers from that perspective of, of that um, type, you know, the, the refinement plan itself, it, it actually does kind of make sense. And so um, anyway, I commend you. I, I think that's a, I think that's a great partnership and, and uh, uh, thanks for thanks for sharing that. I, so I look, you know, if there's other opportunities like that, I, I think that uh, if it makes sense, I, I, I would like to hear more about that. It, anyway, it just sounds like a great partnership and appreciate you sharing it. Thank you. And I'll just real quick um, repeat my thanks to the citizen members of the Planning Commission. Um, you know, I always tell people when, they're, when we're interviewing them for that, that for every hour they're in a meeting, it usually requires two to three hours of reading. Yes. So if we're talking about 45 hours of meetings, they, they're spending, you know, 90 to, you know, 150 hours reading outside the meetings. So they're, they're giving up basically four weeks of, of labor to the county for free annually and, and we truly appreciate that it's what helps us run it's also what gives us that citizen input on planning processes um, no different than a lot of our other advisory committees and all that which is valuable to the commissioners to get that outside input and from the citizens point of view on various issues so I truly appreciate their work and I want to just give uh, real quick while we're talking give Steve Dingle the two-minute warning we're coming up to his his agenda item here, um, and uh, we and just uh, thank you for your time. Any other comments on the Planning Commission annual report? Thank you, Mr. Laird. Thank you, Commissioners. So as soon as uh, Mr. Dingle can make it down from um, County Council, we have an added agenda item. Um, Order 1501-2707 in the matter of resolving the medical portions of the worker, workers' compensation claims of Michael Blum. Um, we met in executive session earlier today, and it, um, we can't take action in executive <coughs> session, so we have to take action in public session. Um, hopefully, Mr. Dingle will be down. While we're waiting, though, we can get on with um, announcements from commissioners uh, and deal with that, which we skipped over this morning. Any uh, announcements from commissioners? Uh, 
Commissioner Lykin. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So as we've been talking so much about transportation, as I think as we know, the, uh, the state has put together a pilot project called the Road User Fee, and they have a task force, and I was notified that uh, I was appointed to the task force to kind of take a look at this next phase, which includes about 5,000 volunteers, I think, is, is now who's going to be part of this, taking a seat, see if it's a logical way to generate dollars for for our uh, for the state highway and, and our road funds here in the state. So it'll be interesting. Looking forward to it. And uh, have the order. Yep, they're 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 moving forward on it. In fact, our first meeting is next week. So uh, I was notified about that yesterday. That so it's going to be quick. So that's the only announcement I have. Thank you. Um, so we'll, we'll suspend announcements for the moment, and we'll go back to what is now item 13A, and it's uh, order number 1501-2707 in the matter of resolving the medical portions of the workers' compensation claims of Michael Blum. Um, and I'll turn this over to um, County Counsel Mr. Dingle. Uh, I don't really have much to add, Chair Bozovich, and uh, other board members. This is... Uh, a claim that was actually approved and resolved by you <clears throat> some time ago. Uh, however, uh, as was explained at the time, because there are ongoing future medical expenses that had to be worked out so that the money could be set aside to pay Medicaid in the future, and that came out to be roughly, I think, $18,000 more than was estimated at the time. So uh, again, I recommend that the board adopt this. It's a good, it's a good resolution for the county, and it ends our financial responsibility. Thank you. Um, I do want to note that the proposed order is already on the website. We put it up right after the executive session, um, or I should say, Diana Jones, our capable staff, put it up in time. So it is on, it is on the website. Um, now under item 13A, if you refresh your agenda for today's meeting, it should come up. Um, is there any questions for legal counsel on this? Seeing none, do I have a motion? But Mr. Chair, I'd move approval of order number 15-01-27-07. Second. <laughs> Any discussion in the motion? Seeing, hearing none. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 And all those opposed. Passes unanimously with Commissioner Farr excused. So going back to Commissioner's business and announcements, any other announcements from Commissioners? Uh, just a, just an announcement. It's kind of a personal one. The Cottage Grove uh, bowling teams were uh, at uh, Furs Bowling Alley this Sunday for district uh, championships and uh, Cottage Grove girls uh, took first place, their first time ever, and nice. Cottage Grove boys uh, took second. We had uh, seven teams in the in the girls uh, category around the district and uh, eight from the boys. So both uh, Cottage Grove boys and girls team will be headed to state at the end of February to, to bowl off for state championships. Excellent. Any other announcements from commissioners? If not, we'll move to future agenda items from commissioners. Um, Mr. Chair, um, the list that is on our um, future agenda, or is that is that the list that you're working off of? Yes. Okay, so everything that was on the list in December is still on that list? For the most part, yeah, we haven't, unless we completed something. It, okay. Yeah. Okay, thank you. And, and in fact, I think um, the discussion of the climate change issue is on next week's agenda. Okay. So, Thanks. Um, I would like to note um, there was one item I had requested to be um, tentatively put on a work session, but I, I would like to get um, three head nods on it, which is to have the board uh, take part in a incident command structure. 101 training, basically, is basic training in, in ICS. Um, 
I've been exposed to it in my position at eWeb and, and gone through the, the early portions of the training, but I, I'd also like to maybe do this in a, in a uh, work session format where other staff could show up if possible, but I think it's important for the board to understand how our departments function during an incident. And one of the things that's useful about ICS structure is it doesn't have to be for a natural disaster or major incident. Anything is an incident. Um, yesterday during technology management team, our IT um, department had talked about trying to manage an incident of a virus outbreak in the computer system and, and the communications and all that. That's a perfect case of what an ICS system can, can do and handle very easily because it assigns roles, it starts an incident, it has a way of completing an incident, and then following up and looking back for lessons learned and all that. I think it would be very powerful if the board could, could spend an hour or even as much as four to eight hours if we're going to do some serious training about it and understanding incident command structures and how they can be utilized by all our county departments. And it kind of goes along with my um, resiliency um, desire for the county and having us understand how we can be more resilient and responsive to incidents. So is there support of, of looking into that? Yes. I've had support of it. So I've got, looks like I have head nods all around because I, I proposed it and I have the other three, so thank you. Uh, and there were two items I just want to bring to your attention that will probably be coming from um, the sheriff's office uh, that he is um, looking at um, potentially coming to the board for a work session on it. And these work sessions may end up being Wednesday meetings because they, they may be lengthy. Um, and one of the items that the sheriff was looking at was um, talking with us about hash oil production um, and the experience of Colorado and Washington State as they were legalizing marijuana and small hash oil production operations cropped up and the public um, uh, health hazard that those are. Yeah, and, and particularly dangerous and whether and having an informational meeting for us to to relay some of the information he received uh, in some uh, uh, conferences that he's been to and then we you know, maybe leading to us uh, having a legislative effort at the state or even locally about controlling those those production facilities uh, the other issue that he was considering about having an agenda item on in work session would be on a body camera pilot for the, the sheriff's office, which, uh, you know, has some also legislative components as far as how long do you have to store video for public records law? Is it going to fall under typical public records law where we have to keep, you know, three years, five years, seven years worth of data? the volume of data body cams generate and the, the IT challenge that they are and some of the other issues. So he'd, he would love to have a work session with us relative to that pilot project and looking towards the future in that. And I think um, with some of the more recent headlines and all that, it's, it's something very appropriate for the board to look into. So I just wanted to give you guys a heads up on those two items that may be coming from the sheriff's office. So any other agenda items for the future? If not, I'd like to get into review of assignments. And Mr. mocher I don't believe there are any while you weren't here. But I'm yeah, I, Mr. Chair, I did go back and look at the video from this morning. Let me first apologize for uh, I was uh, about an hour late for the meeting. I did let the chair and vice chair know that I wasn't going to be here. I had a family obligation uh, to attend to. My daughter was asked to participate in a three school program, and being a very proud father, I wanted to participate uh, in that. Um, and I, I uh, thought very carefully about it because I never want to miss a board meeting, but I did feel like it was important to be there uh, uh, for her and, and still being relatively new to the community. Um, in the future, I will let all the commissioners know if uh, I'm going to be absent or uh, late for a meeting. But I did go back and look at the public comment, and uh, I know that there was a question. Uh, there were some comments made uh, and concerns expressed from one individual, in particular uh, Ms. Lewis. Uh, we have those comments. I followed up with the sheriff's office 
we will provide a formal response to Ms. Lewis. I do know that the Sheriff's Office has spoken directly to Ms. Lewis uh, on more than one occasion, but we will provide another follow-up, which we'll also share with the Commissioner so you have more detail about that particular incident. Uh, so we will follow up on that public comment that was raised. Um, the, the, I don't know about the Oregon Lottery. Uh, I wasn't here for that piece, so I don't know if there's any additional There was no action items okay. from that. Um, uh, there was a, a, a small follow-up uh, for uh, Mr. Kyler uh, related to the Legislative Committee report, and so we will follow up on that. Um, and then, of course, the vehicle registration fee, and uh, we have our marching orders there and very detailed uh, process that I think we laid out for uh, February 10th coming back on that one. It might be nice to have a reminder in, in the April, 1st of May, that um, the uh, tobacco and e-cigarette ordinance yep. conversation and come back with a report on what they heard on the conversations with the cities and then um, a discussion on potential amendments. Okay, great, thank you. Any other assignments that anyone heard that weren't reviewed here? Thank you. Any other business for the board today? Seeing and hearing none, I am going to adjourn the board meeting. We will reconvene next Tuesday at 9 o'clock.